Remember the drill. Um, to please, as you're logging in, to rename yourselves, already see one person, Edwina. She's already set up that way, which is awesome. So you're going to rename yourself. Number one, in front of your name, if you are simply a single agent, just rename yourself that way. And number two, if you're a single agent with an admin. And number three, if you're an agent with other agents on your team. So if you would rename yourself like that with the number first, so that when we get ready for our breakout rooms, um, you are, you, we know how to put you in the right room. Rebecca, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, number one, how do I rename myself? Um, so there is the, um, oh shoot, um, under participants, right, Prem? Help me out here. I think under participants, when you click on the participant, uh, click no, participants, um, and then it's more. And then name. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't interrupt. Yeah. Shoot, what happened? Okay, do I keep my name too, or just put like one single? Or uh, just like just one, two, or three, and then your name. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What was the one? If you're just a single agent with okay. no admin, yeah. Mm. And this will help us when it comes time to break everyone out and it's in the chat as well, if you have any questions. And yeah, and we'll get everybody in and then we'll get started. Today might be, just a heads up, we might be a little bit shorter because our section, um, is a little bit shorter. So while everybody's chiming in and naming, renaming themselves, anybody have any thoughts about last week? Did you get anything done over the week? Anything you want to share that was awesome? Or maybe not, maybe challenging, I don't know. No, huh? All right, well, we'll get, uh, we'll get everybody in. Ms. Melissa, may I ask a dumb question, please? Well, there's never a dumb question, my friend, but yes, you may ask a question. Okay, so last week was my first week, right? So oh. I understand that we are doing or putting together a plan to have a great customer, for our customers to have a great experience. That's right. So what are we supposed to be doing like for homework in the meantime? Is this some information that we're supposed to upload into command as the task, as we you know do our business? Is that what this is for? So Brenda, great question. And yeah, so it, that's not a dumb question. That's actually an outstanding question. So, um, so first, thanks for joining us. But here's the, here's the goal of the workshop is that the customer experience involves five steps. So it's setting expectations, it's serving our, our, our clients, right? It's um, surveying them, <clears throat> it's a lot of S's, surpassing and then sustaining. So the whole thought behind the workshop is that we would take all of the steps that we do as real estate agents and then do all of those things, right? Set, serve, um, survey, surpass and sustain so that we can create lifelong clients. So Dan has actually created or built this great spreadsheet. So every week we're going to go through the spreadsheet and it's based on a list of tasks that we do as realtors and then go through these tasks and look at them from the eyes of the customer experience. And what are the things that you want to do wrapped around how you do business? What's your value proposition? and how you want to create a great experience for your client. So that's the goal. So when we do these breakout sessions, like we did last week, it's to be able to mastermind with agents that are doing in the same type of business that you are, and that together we can start to build those, that experience throughout the process. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. I guess, I guess what I will have to do, <clears throat> put it maybe on a word document, like almost like a task checkoff list. Like I'm going to do yes. this, this. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah and I think that that's, you know, I, I think that that's part of it. And uh, Dan and I were kind of chatting about this ahead of time is that I, I, that was one of the questions that I have, right? Because in order to have an experience, one of the things that, that people say most about agents is that we don't communicate well. So sometimes simply by having outstanding communication, that creates an amazing experience, right? So what emails are you going to send? How are you going to communicate? When are you going to communicate? Do you have the email templates set up that are duplicatable that you can do every single time? If you go under contract on a listing, what does that email to the seller look like? What does that email to the co-op agent look like? What does it look like to your assistant? It should be the same every single time because that's how you can scale your business. When you get ready to pass it to somebody else, you say, okay, this is what you have to do and it's already there and built for them. So is it, is, are we going to get everything done in an hour once a week? No, you're going to have to do a little bit of, of homework. For sure. Christine, did you have a question or comment? A little bit. Yeah. Um, so it looks like at the end of the eight weeks, we would have kind of a master list, but yeah. then we have to mechanically make it work. Yes. That's, I think, the crux of what we're what I'm worrying about. Um, well, right. Go ahead. Yeah. So we we can decide our different elements, but we then have to build it and, and, and put it somewhere. Right. So yeah, that's the part that I'm going to struggle with. It well, is. and I, and I think that's the case and, and funny enough, you would say that. And, and again, right, this is a workshop. So we're, sure. Dan and I are just kind of, you know, building it because we felt like there was a need for something like this. So and that's kind of what I said, you know, right? So is it one pass through to figure out the things that on the list that you do, right? Maybe you send a pre-listing package, maybe you don't, right? So if right. you don't send a pre-listing package, then that becomes not a process. Um, so, um, you know, so then, so you don't do that. So you keep it off. Sure. So that's it, right? It's good to examine all of it because it's like, oh, should it, I add that? Right. Uh, and you know, right. are people doing that? You know, it, it's all good. It's all good, but we, we have to pick and choose. And then, yeah, of course, we're going to have to do the implement part. <laughs> we're going to have to pick and choose. And so is it going to be two pass throughs through the list? And so what I was going to suggest today is that if you have a checklist already in place or you have email templates that you already use, and I do, I, they're just things that I would want to add onto it right? That I know that, that when I go under contract, these are all the emails that I send, and this is all the information. And in every step of the way, it's what comes next. So if you okay. have things like that, right, we have our, our, our Facebook page, like go and post it and share it on the Facebook page. Just like we see the files and things that are on pivot, the pivot um, mm -hmm. website or the pivot Facebook page, right? So go and share that and I'll start to add those things as well. But I do think that you're right. It's, this is not going to be complete. It's going to be, how do I do these things? At what level do I want to do them? And what do I need to implement? And yes, you are going to have to do a little bit of work. So has everyone renamed themselves? If you're just joining and Prem is putting it in the chat as well, we're going to do breakout okay, sessions. So in order for you to get into the right room, you need to have a number one before your name if you're a single agent with no admin, number two in front of your name if you're a, an agent with just admin, number three if you're an agent that have agents on your team. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Dan, how are you doing? He was having a little internet things. And, okay, so we're good. All right, so. <clears throat> All right. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you guys for being here. I'm super excited. We're week four, which is pretty crazy, um, of our customer experience workshop. So um, customer experience, right? How do we do this? How do we create not just good customer service, but great a great experience? We have to set expectations. We have to serve our clients. We have to survey them. How are we doing? We have to surpass their expectations. And then we, of course, we have to sustain the relationship and the experience. 
So that's what we're working on. And Dan has created this wonderful spreadsheet that is kind of a work in progress with all of us. And this week, um, Dan, well, I don't know, Dan, you kind of take over and tell us like kind of where you are with the spreadsheet and make that introduction and then we'll. Uh... All right. So, so actually one of the first things I wanted to do, Melissa, is maybe just take it a step back and just ask people, what have you gotten out of what we've done so far? What ahas have you gotten so far? And, and what did you, um, what did you uh, maybe realize about your business? Um, like what brings you, keeps coming back to doing this? Um, so I just wanted to get a little bit of input from folks and just find out what, <clears throat> what has you here? What have you learned so far? And what do you want out of today based on what we did the other day? Oh, thank you guys. I love it. I love the participation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eva, would you would you start us off? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it has um, not forced. That's a word that comes to mind, but it has made me realize that I have to go back to the systems, quote unquote systems that I have because I I definitely am missing parts there and um, like just the listing, the pre-listing package. I mean, just everything you put out, it's like whoa, hold on, I could definitely step it up. So right. that's what I've gotten. Good, good. So, so stepping it up, that, that's one thing. Uh, is it Dana? Yes, it is. Can you hear me? Yes. You can. Okay. Yep, go ahead. All right. Yeah, um, it's, it's mostly to me about just becoming the best agent that you can. And you're really providing like a, so much knowledge that, you know, it, it could tweak anybody's, you know, perception of what they thought they were bringing to the table and realize, mm -hmm. wow, I'm missing this or this is really great to implement. So I thank you. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Definitely. Good. It's okay. true. Good. And, um, and, and, you know, again, this is a credit to all of you because I'm learning through your participation. So the more you participate, the more you grab people and have them join us the more we're, we're, I think, all benefiting from it. Um, Angie, how about you? Um, I learned a lot of ideas from other agents across the country that are doing different things than I am that would be very simple to put into our systems mm -hmm. and, to, and also to help me realize so many things that, that I need to have templates for, mm -hmm. that I need to get better organized mm -hmm. and to make it simpler and easier. Right. So I just appreciate people sharing, you know, some of the things they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and one of my goals here um, is that this gives you a little structure to understand how to organize your business. So now you can kind of see it from a different perspective and it allows you to, you know, you know, it allows us to share a lot of tools that we may already have and we can kind of plug it into this system. Uh, and, and I'll come back to this in a moment so that uh, you can see what I'm referencing again when we come back to that. All right, Lisa, why don't you wrap us up here? Yeah. Um I think the two biggest ahas have been really amazing. Um, about a week or two ago, Jack Smith said, not a five-star business, but a seven-star business. Mm -hmm. Big aha. Yeah. And then I want to add to it. I thought that one of my strengths was communication. But what I see more and more is the consistency is part of, is, is the communication. So if you don't have the systems and process in place, mm -hmm. I question how good are you really in, in communication? And that's a huge aha that I'm getting from this. And it makes me really excited to participate and garner from everybody. Thanks, Lisa. And one of the things that I love about this is that it, it provides a little structure and in a world that we live in, in real estate, where everything's always coming to us or at us at you know, you know 90 miles an hour and we're getting pulled in different directions. This is an opportunity to kind of come back and, and, and have a little structure so that when the world is taking us left and right all over the place, we have a, a place that keeps us in some sort of uh, like within the lanes of, of where we should be going. So we're heading toward the right uh, re result. So that's gonna get me to the spreadsheet. Uh, let's, okay, if I just jump into the spreadsheet here. Yeah, everybody make sure you rename yourself Why Dan's doing this because there's still a, a group of you that have not yet and, and we are gonna put you in the right room without it, so. All right. Okay. And, and before I start, I just wanted to ask you, is there anyone uh, 
that's joining us today that wasn't here last week and doesn't have access to the spreadsheet, because I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, send it to you, put the link in for you. If uh, if you need access to it, go ahead and put, uh, okay, I see a couple of people in the chat here saying you need it. Yeah, this is Rebecca. Right, so I don't have second. it. Let me go ahead and this right, is, um, okay, I so actually let's... missed one through three. I'm going to watch your other recordings. All right, great. I'm glad you're here, Rebecca. Yeah, All right, so let me go take a second and get that uh, over here. Yeah, and all the recordings and I'll just page two. So mm -hmm. okay. So I'm just going to get the link here real quickly, and you should have it in the chat in just a second. And again, uh, what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to show you the spreadsheet in a second, and we're going to have this as a tool for you to be able to work work off of. Okay, there you go, there you go. Okay, so what you can do right now, if you'd like to is go ahead and open the spreadsheet into another window so you have access to it. I'm gonna share it here on my screen so you can see it and we're gonna follow along on my screen in a moment um, and start there. And let me just go ahead and get my screen set up here so that you can do that. Uh, done, okay. All right, can everyone see my screen? We can. All right, fan. Fantastic. Okay, so last week, what we did was we talked about, you know, we, well, let me back up here. Uh, we started off with this, where here we're going to apply the, the 6S model from the customer's experience to this customer experience lifecycle for sellers. And last week, we focused on the pre-work and on the needs analysis. This week, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick moment to review what we did last week and then focus on pricing strategy. The pricing strategy section will be relatively short. It's gonna be relatively easy. We're gonna get through it pretty quickly. And what I'm hoping is we're gonna have a lot of ahas to share with one another. And we're gonna start by just talking a little bit about what we did last week. And what I did is I went ahead last week um, and I took everything that you guys did in the breakout rooms and I kind of synthesized everything together. I kind of pulled it all together and put it all in the master copy. So um, I believe you have access to the master copy, but you can't edit it. So if you wanted to just kind of work off of the master copy, you can cut and paste and put it to your own spreadsheet. Uh, eventually what will happen though is I'm going to get a copy of that to you so that you can save it and tweak it for your own team and for your own personal use, uh, your own business. Sound good? Great. Right. Okay. So, so here's what I did. What you're going to see is when I go to the next tab, there's going to be in column A, um, you might remember that where people made changes last week when they did the when the breakout rooms, we put an X in the different in column A, uh, mm -hmm. just so that I could easily find those things. And I just kept those things, uh, those X's, so you can see the changes, that you, the improvements that you made uh, by working together. And this is what it looks like here. And what I started to do, I didn't finish this part here in blue, but you can kind of see that this shows based on uh, an appointment date, the time frame that things are going to happen. And, and as I scroll down, you'll start to see it a little more, how things are naturally going to flow during the course of working with a client. And, and, and this is all tied to this, this timeline. So if, for example, the appointment date was, uh, what's today's date? Someone help me out. Today's it's June 1st. 1st. June 1st. Okay, good. All right. So June 1st, um, it'll automatically take a moment because it's a big spreadsheet. Um, and what will happen is, uh, you'll, you should see this update in a moment. There we go. You see how it all shift over. And now this time frame um, shifts over here. And here's the first one in red. And if I wanted this time schedule, someone asked me, why is this display week here? Well, that corresponds to the weeks of the year here. Uh, and this rep represents the first day of the year. So the, we're now in week number 22, but if I wanted to look, start everything from week 21, um, this will shift over and it'll um, just kind of allow you to see what's happening during that week of the year. You and do you'll see that update in a moment. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I clicked on the link that you posted, but I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing the first part that you sent that you were just sharing with. I'm not seeing this part that you're sharing now. There's tabs at the bottom. You have to click on the different tabs. You see, you see these tabs down here. Yeah, I hit those, and nothing's coming up for me. You don't see where it's. Oh, maybe your thing is too far to the 
in the future? Maybe, let me try to get out. So slide it to the... Do you, do you still see my screen? Yeah. These tabs here? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was hitting. It's, it's... Maybe if you go to the one that says master copy, you'll, you'll see it. If you don't see it, um, we can, uh, hopefully in the chat, people can kind of help guide you through what needs to happen. Okay, thank you. I think what she needs to do is to get out and go back in again. That's what I'm doing right now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So let me get back in here myself. I'm not sure why I changed colors. Do you see it as green on your sh on your screen, or is it is blue on your screen? It's blue, Dan, because you're in um, you're in what's called. Uh, hold on, I gotta find what's called version history. You want to see where it says today at the top? You want to hit the yeah. left arrow to get back to the live yeah, document. I'm with you. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And also, you can say okay. All right. So, so anyway, I just so I just wanted to share with you how this works real quickly. Here's the other thing, though, um, for the people that were talking about how this is kind of a a tool then that you can use to kind of customize for your own business. And like Melissa was talking about having like customized emails, for example. What you could do is. Um, I'm trying to look for a good example, like here, send a thank you card. Maybe you have a standard thank you card, or maybe you use AM cards um, as your a vendor that you send cards through. And what you could do is put in here uh, a link and you'll put in um, the web address, amcards.com. And now I've, I've created a link here to AM cards so that all I have to do is click on here and it's gonna take me or the person on my team that's gonna be responsible for this straight to that website. Or it takes you straight to the document that you're gonna to use to send that you need to print a copy of or something like that. Uh, so that's how that's designed to work. I think we have to have a lesson in those things in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. so I just wanna introduce, like share with you that this can be done. And if you need help doing it outside of this, this is probably the, this is not the place really to learn it all. Agreed. I'm but just, just saying, to I be, know that there are some high eyes yeah. in the group that are like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you have a quick overview and, and just, uh, you know, an idea of what can be done there. All right. So uh, just at the last, last time we, um, when we last met, everything in X was things that people added to the system and, you know, it starts, with the initial contact and then talked about uh, entering the appointment into the Google calendar and then following up with your client uh, or the prospect to confirm that appointment. Uh, then from there, we talked about researching the, that prospective owner on social media with Facebook and or Google search, um, updating the client information in your database with appropriate notes and tags, uh, updating your opportunities, uh, putting them on a smart plan and a couple people suggested the importance of having daily contact with that person once you set the appointment to keep them uh, keep you top of mind for them. Uh, from there, a couple people made this great suggestion around the videos and maybe having some sort of can't wait to meet you or here's what happens next video, which was such a great idea. That should actually probably be part of a new customer or new client smart plan. Um, then we talked about sending a maybe not a thank you card, but like, a you know, again, it's like a looking forward to meeting you card to that perspective, um, or can't wait to meet you card to that perspective uh, client. Um, I added this also, the importance of sending referral, a card to your referral. Um, then there's the uh, pre-listing package to send that to the, your prospective client. Um, sending some sort of pre-listing uh, gift or bring a, getting a gift to bring, you know, whether it's flowers like Jack uh, Smith does or, or it's something um, like that. Then uh, the next thing was doing some research for the on the client, maybe uh, RPR, going through the um, public records, going to check the MLS on latest market trends, uh, checking the MLS for recent sales history, uh, creating a supply and demand analysis of properties in the same neighborhood, um, preparing your initial CMA since you haven't seen the property. And uh, then a couple of people suggested doing a drive-by or maybe doing a Google uh, Maps search of the property to learn about the house and so forth. And then, you know, getting a picture of the property. This is what people identified as pre-work that should be done. And if you can do this as part of a systematic process and identify it between you and your agent or an assistant maybe to help you out with this, 
uh, you know, you can create a, a process that you can do re repeatedly. And because you have this in this tool, you can now potentially leverage it, whether it's with an assistant or someone else doing that work for you. Um, you know, you, you can leverage some of this work so you buy, get back some of your time. So uh, are there any questions about the pre-work in that section? Are we all good with that? Yes, it's awesome. Good. All right, guys, thank you. <laughs> all right, thanks. Uh, I'm gonna be quiet until someone gives me some feedback. Okay, guys, we're gonna talk. <laughs> all right, the needs analysis part was, was also good. Um, I think there was actually another section, uh, a couple things that were added here, but I just didn't include the X's here, but we talked about for part of the needs analysis was to con call, uh, to confirm the appointment and also make sure, this was some, something someone added, make sure all decision makers are gonna be there. Um, that could be the agent or maybe more uh, often. I think that there are women out there. Time, I like me. Or, and, and maybe that would be an assistant in some cases. Um, then review the meeting objectives and, and complete the pre-listing qualification. And a couple of people suggested a uh, like get to know, know you form. Um, and that was something like, uh, you know, just kind of a questionnaire that you might have to find out things like um, what Louise Weiss had suggested that she finds out what their client's favorite chocolate or candy is and brings that to them, um, you know, during, uh, for the closing, not the closing, but during the transaction, just as, as a nice little surprise. Um, a couple of people even suggested creating a little Google form for that. Uh, the next thing was just to update the CMA for the pre-listing uh, listing presentation, preparing the seller's net sheet, uh, preparing the listing presentation, calling to confirm um, or texting the client to confirm that you're going to be arriving when you're arriving, uh, touring the house during the listing appointment, reviewing objectives and benefits of listing uh, with you, um, reviewing the seller's motivation and timeline to sell. Uh, getting the paperwork signed and then sending a gift after the listing presentation. So those were some of the specific needs. Okay, so that gets us up to date. Any questions about that section on the needs analysis? Any ahas? I just want to think. Anything that we're missing that we, sh that we, uh, you know, that now that you've seen this makes you go for one of those two sections, we probably should have there again. Are we good? Sorry. Yeah, I really, I, yeah, I think we're good. I like that part. Um, can anybody list something that they would give for a gift after? Like, the, you know, you send a note, thank you for allowing me the time, you know, allowing me to visit your home. Um, but what kind of gift would you give? I've never done that. I, I usually just send a note. Yeah, one of the things that you could do, and, I, and Erica, you can pipe in too here, um, is that one of the things that I do, and I don't send it at this point in time, but, but there are several gift services out there. There's EvaBot, there's Client Giant that will do an automatic gift thing. And you can either, you set the price point of what you want it to be, and they either get to choose, kind of answer a few questions, and they send them gifts based upon their preferences, or, or you have predetermined gifts that you can send out, but it's all done automatically for you. You just go into their system and put in very little bit of information. So you could do something like that. Okay. Erica. Hey, sorry, I just can't type right now and I'm not in a place where I can show my screen, but I can if you. Um, so a couple of things that came to mind. Number one, I lately I've been actually just um, taking my my clients after we close to dinner. I mean, if you're on like a mega team or like, you know, an MRE, it might be a little tough to take everybody to dinner because you might be busy every day of the week. But if you don't have that much business at the moment, just really that quality time with them. Like now they're like really my friends. Like they just like really appreciated the fact that I was like, Hey, let's go celebrate. Um, and, and then also and I think, uh, Erica, I think that's going to be something that we'll talk about when we get to the later step in the process when we talk about post closing. Closing yeah. and post closing, and that'll be something that'll show up there uh, at the end. Of the right. So, Erica, were you going to say something else? The idea is just that that if you're going to do something like that, that you have it in such a way that it is that it's not adding more to your plate. Okay. 
right? You know, create, and there there are some, like I said, Eva Bot, Client Giant, and there might be others out there that um, that are very easy to use. I use Eva Bot, and people, it, I've gotten more positive feedback from that one type of gift than anything else I've ever sent in 17 years. Can you put that in the chat so that I know how to spell it? Thank you. Sure can. All right, Joe, did you have a question? And then we'll keep going. You had your hand raised and then it's gone. No, I guess I was just saying that uh, for uh, the gifts, like a pre-listing gift, I guess if that's what you're talking about, I, I mean, my first initial thought was like branded stuff, you know, branded coffee mugs or uh, um, pens, those type of things that kind of, I don't know, I guess keep you top of mind during the start of the process. So I guess that's where I was kind of going with it is more than um, something else, I guess. Right. And there is, um, there's another agent and I'm, her name is escaping me at the moment. And, and she has branded coffee mugs that she already has with her florist. And she just, they just send the, the client's information, their address, whatever. And they say, you know, just list it. And then she creates this little bouquet of flowers with a few balloons and she has it delivered to their workplace so that everyone in the office sees it come coming in. She spends less than $15 or something like she just has a, has a, has a deal with the florist at what flower she has left over, whatever, you know, and she said it costs her $15 and it always goes to the office. So yeah, Marielle. And then last one, and then we'll keep going. We're going to get into our breakout rooms. Okay. Um, what I do is, is I, I'm a, I'm a potter. So I'll make little things, little bowls, have candies in them or put some flowers in a little tiny vase. And, and at the closings, I haven't had a lot of them, but I've made um, platters and plates specifically for like what kind of decor they have in their home. That's an awesome idea. If you're talented, that's cool. I love <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Save, yeah. Save them too. All right, Dan. Okay. All right. So, so today we're going to focus on the breakout rooms. And again, just like before, um, we're going to go ahead and just focus on, on these steps that you'll see as a reminder in each tab is we're going to set, serve, surpass, um, survey, surpass, and, and find ways to sustain these, um, you know, the, what we're doing for our clients in regard, with regard to a pricing, a pricing strategy. And this is going to be, I think, really interesting conversation in the breakout rooms in light of what James has been talking about with regard to pricing strategy this week and the importance of staying ahead of the market. Uh, one of the things that they hire for us for is to provide them with uh, pricing and give them a good pricing strategy. So uh, I'm really curious to see what happens in the, in the breakout rooms. Again, we, you're going to be sent into a breakout room for, Melissa, what are you thinking, about 10, 15 minutes? Maybe? I don't know. I, yeah, probably. I would say 15 minutes. Yeah. Because I don't think yeah. this one's going to take too long. I don't think it's going to take very long either. And and, uh, and if you are done with this section, what I'm going to suggest is you you peek at the next section, this property preparation one, because this one's actually pretty long. The next one, and we're not going to do this today, but there's a lot to this next step. I'm going to try and clean this up before the next one because there's, there's almost like too many little steps there. The way it's written out, I think. Um, we'll however, this. there's some yeah. good things in there. We'll wrote this. Uh, and <laughs> oops, sorry. This this list this list just so you know. Uh, Paul came from um, from Pro or one of the local realtor associations. That this was the 237 steps that real estate agents do, and this is this help organize for us. So, um, so anyway, uh, just uh, one, if you're done with this part, please take a, a peek at this next part and, and just start working on it a little bit. You're going to be broken up in uh, groups um, by uh, by. Uh, your team size again, uh, whether you're a single agent or an agent with an assistant or administrative help or an agent with other agents and administrative help uh, and uh, just have fun with it. And again, to change it, you just go ahead and right click over here um, to insert a row or, or uh, if to move a row, just go ahead and put your mouse on it and just slide it up or slide it down to relocate the order, okay? And you're going to so, work in the tab okay. that is your room number. Thank you. Yes. So on the very bottom, when you get your room number, go to the, ta the tab that corresponds to your room number. So you're going to have to remember what room number you get assigned to and then go to that tab. And it may not be the same tab as last time. 
And then we'll, we'll, we'll come back after about 15 minutes and just do a quick debrief on that as well. <coughs> All right, are we ready? All right, Prem. Prem, are you ready? Yep. What would we do without Prem? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in their rooms now. Okay. Great, and thank you. Give you notifications when you start getting to the end of the time. like the different you know that that happen around the country yeah mm -hmm. hey listen the fact that we all have mls is a cool thing because i i taught agents in malaysia and in albania and they do not have an mls so they are like living back in like what we would perceive to be the wild wild west and how they i started in the wild wild west when we had telephone books right yeah i did not thank goodness but i it was uh <laughs> yeah where you had those big books and they were the computer printouts and i remember looking for houses when you had those yeah yeah i started before the internet yeah wow think about that yeah yeah and i teach a lot yeah. of just, and yeah. I complain about time i'm like um, if I was writing an offer and done at 8 30 or nine o'clock at night, I then had to get in my car and drive to the listing broker's office and put it in their drop box and then go home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you didn't, yeah, because then you before you had to fax it or whatever, it's like, oh lordy. But that sense of urgency probably was not the same as it is today it either. Wasn't. Everyone expected it to be like, yeah, yeah. It has changed a yeah. lot. I think that's a that's the flip side. Are we, all right, it looks like everybody's coming back. Can I ask a question, Dan? I don't know, you've probably thought about this. One of the ideas that came up in our room is you've got this wonderful spreadsheet going and linking it somehow to command, um, where we ask the people who develop command to put these items under, under the opportunities, the tasks and the opportunities, allowing us to make smart plans or set up time reminders and things like that. I don't know if that's part of your wise knowledge or decision-making process here. <laughs> you know, I think at some point we're going to either create our own little smart plans that tie into something like this, or, mm -hmm. it'll, or it'll be something that a command will evolve to, because I think it makes a lot of sense. I think yeah. people yeah. are fine. Like, I think yeah. that you're all finding that, it's something that really would benefit you. And it, again, it helps people kind of visualize, here's the natural flow of things. It goes from here, and then this is the next step, and this is the next step. And it's kind of, it's like a checklist with yeah, time a, associated with, you know. We, it's we, a project we, plan. Yeah, we often talk about, how, it's a project plan. That's exactly what it is. That's a Gantt chart. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. It's a project mm -hmm. plan. And, yeah. and 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 the nice thing about it is it's broken down in, in chunks that hopefully uh, allow us to conduct, you know, run our business. Like we could almost run our business off of this for yeah. each project, e each client is a project. You know, yeah. Yep, to... that's right. I just want the command reminders to be attached to it. Yes, yeah. you can do it in opportunities, and some of it's already there. Yeah, yeah. 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 The checklist yeah, and opportunities. Say, opportunities yeah. has those checklists. So, so the the difference is, we, yeah, you have the checklists and opportunities. What we don't have, I think, in opportunities uh, is um, the Gantt chart, kind of like the way this is set up right now. Right. right. Um, and and yeah, and and this, you know, um, it's not to re it's not intended, of course, to replace command. I think ultimately this will become something that you utilize and kind of import into command and you live through command because it's it's such a you know it it is a great tool also, but this is another way to, it's just a, a good working document. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. great guidance, especially for yeah. Um, new agents. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Um, so let, let's kind of go ahead and do what we did last time. Z, you have a quick question. Want something you want to add real quickly? Oh, no, I was just going to, uh, I said it when you left our room that I discussed this with my coach yesterday and she uh we add in my my cyber backer is going to be um putting it into command and then having that time slide and then so that we can have 
because she's some of them really majority of the task on the agent. I mean, on the assistant is for EA and I have mm -hmm. a, a VA. So we will. So some things are for the EA. I'm going to take over, but we just have that slide so mm -hmm. we can easily implement them. And um, mm -hmm. that would be much easier for me. Mm -hmm. so I won't have to think about it. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. so it's really just a working tool that you can then leverage through command with your assistant or a VA, or uh, I think Mark Benson suggested that maybe, uh, you know, maybe a group of people decide to go in together and find a VA that does like helps put this all together for them. It just kind of works almost like project wise with a person at a time uh, to knock things out. Uh, but, you know, let's get to that. Let's start, um, Melissa, I, so on time, we're, I don't know how quickly we can get through this, but you know, like last week, I thought we could go from room to room and and yeah, get people's like aha's yeah. input. Yeah, we don't have too much on it. So yeah, if we can just do that. So who was in room one that wants to share like things that you added to thoughts? All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and just kind of walk through the the rooms real quickly. Okay. So right. so we need a spokes a spokesperson from room number one. Can you go to room one's tab? Yep. Awesome. There we go. Yeah, so we didn't really add much. Um, I learned about new uh, software called InfoStats or InfoSparks that I guess some people have with their MLS systems um, where you can get more data for pricing. Um, it sounds like actual help with price, you know, putting in the information on the house and getting price per square foot. So that was another tool people use to come up with a pricing strategy. Um, and then we needed a place to put um, asking more questions. And some of this could be up above somewhere, but on line 44, uh, mortgage, you know, what they have left, um, upgrades in the home that they've made, if they've had an appraisal recently, refinancing, things like that, um, that get involved in their pricing strategy in the net sheet. Hey, uh, just keep things moving quickly uh, in the chat uh, for the different rooms. Go ahead and just say if you're, you know, basically decide with the people where they were in the room. Either nominate someone in the chat so when we get to your room, um, you, people, someone can jump out real quickly. So room number two, who's going to talk about room number two? Number two, I think that we um, might have reorganized the, the, the sequence order mm -hmm. of those steps there. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right, perfect. All right. Any other ahas, Anita? Um, not not from that. I think it was just decided. Also, um, it was discussed that you know each different market center might have a different you know priority and how they go, but okay. just for general overall, that that was what we uh, kind of ended up with. All right, perfect. Room number three. I'll do it. Uh, we basically reorganized the the order of things. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we added anything, but I do like the, the addition of asking for updates, um, asking for updates on the property. And was that kind of in, with regard to the, the question that uh, when I popped into the room, just asking for feedback on, like asking the, the seller for feedback? Yeah, so in terms of the the five S's we were thinking, oh, how do we do survey, you know? And so we, there's a little bit of discussion of, um, well, how do we want to, you know, is there anything, how am I doing is probably not great, <laughs> but so, um, you know, what do you think? So that was very helpful. Asking the seller what they think about what they see, the data that's presented. So I think that's helpful. Perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, room four. Okay, I'll, oh, room four is busy. Okay. Okay, I'll go real quick. Um, Mark Benson's with his brand ID. Uh, brand. He suggested that. Okay, uh, room. Was that room room five? Oh, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, room four. Oh, I'm so sorry. I jumped real fast. Yeah, that's sorry. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll come back to room four. Oh, go, go uh, ahead, Z. Mark Benson suggested that you you or your team uh, set up an auto email to yourself while you're going to a listing appointment uh, because you know sellers and buyers have their phone on them all, all the time, have their lot from Zillow and other third-party websites that if you 
some people don't have coming soon and if uh, Zillow does not have coming soon. So if, you, if it's a coming soon to a property that you're going up, you have an appointment at, you get the alert because you set yourself on auto email and you have know how to discuss it with your client or your potential client, the seller to say, oh, this house next door just went on the market. And so you can go in depth with it so they can know that you're on top of everything, you're on top of the market by faster than Zillow and other third parties. So I think that's extremely brilliant. And, and then there's the other one um, I think that I added that in oh. from a conversation was yeah. uh, that um, that instead of like uh, reviewing MLS uh, prior to listening, just to, to basically review the MLS for trends and changes, and especially in light of what we're talking about with James right now, to stay ahead of the market and just, you know, do um, you know, maybe a weekly market updates or snapshots just so that you're aware of what's going on in the market and can, can stay ahead of it, uh, especially again in, in the current market. Um, all right, room number four. I guess I'm gonna have to talk. So we added the mm -hmm. items that are in red. I'm gonna make it real short. I'm not gonna read it all. Okay. So we added the items in red and then we started to reorganize it because we didn't think that it was in the order of when we sit in front of a client mm -hmm. to do our pricing strategy. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. All right. I keep going because you know I'm a high eye. I'm <laughs> <going down. laughs> all right, all right. So uh, I'll keep it short. Yeah. All right, and I'll keep it short. Sweet. Uh, just uh, of those things in red, what was just real quickly? Uh, which one was like your biggest aha that wasn't in there that was really important to do? Um, I think it's one that Tyrone gave. I don't know his last name, but I think it's important to add the automatic agreement for price reduction setting the expectation proactively as possible. And I came in after we even closed out and I said, you know, it's real important to also review any acceptable terms and conditions of the deal, of, of the pricing strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and great. then I, I have a question more to this, Dan and, um, and Melissa. If, if is this what you want, some of the items might repeat itself because if this is really a kind of um, footprints to follow. What you preliminary do as agents, and then as you move along the process, it moves on to the client. So there might be the implementation of the review, but you as the agent first start the process, if that makes sense. So like we had said, you know, we're gonna look at the market stats first to educate us, the agent. But then there might be another line further down that says, you know what, now I'm gonna present those stats to the customer. So we might need, it, it may seem like it's repeating, but I think it's necessary in order so you don't forget the steps as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and those are part of a process. I mean, that's what you have to do and you wanna do repeatedly and then find ways to maybe simplify the process where we can maybe have redundant steps that we don't have to do, but then there are others that we do need to do. So right. that's a good observation. Um, all right, let's jump to room number six real quickly. Um, I guess I'll jump in. So um, we added several things in here. I think um, the biggest probably aha was same for us was making sure that we add that price reduction language actually into the agreement. And then we added in getting mm -hmm. the agreement actually signed after we've gone over the pricing strategy. Um, and then we add in some additional things in here, like getting the client set up on emails and ourselves set up on emails. So we we added quite a bit in there. I'm sorry, was that room number six or what room were you in? Yes, number six. Six, okay, that's interesting. Uh, There's not anything on there. Yeah, it doesn't show up here. Oh, that's strange, I see it on mine. Other people were saying the same thing. So that's something must be up that it's not showing. And I'm sorry, I just finally got home. Um, Dan, I'll, Dan, I'll share mine with you maybe and then okay yeah i'll share back to you what i did and maybe that you can update right. i'm not sure what happened <laughs> and one of the things that i just like yeah, as far that's as one of that melanie oh wait hold on let me see if i can log off this phone um that i thought was so helpful because once we start about it is keep um they have this thing when showing time where you can keep the sellers in the know of what's happening with the market so if that would help because if they're like oh we didn't 
that's right. We didn't have any showings this week. So when you go to ask for a price reduction and they see after like 30 days, we've only had one showing or two showings and the same thing, setting up a seller on a, a neighborhood market watch and a buyer neighborhood market watch, because they might think, Oh, I want 800,000. But if all of a sudden where they're buying and the price reduces to 5%, they might be willing to take the 750. And by giving them an update on where they're going, not just where they are, they might be willing to make a shift in what they were willing to ex accept. Yep. Uh, and thank you for driving, Melanie. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, room seven. Um, I wrote the things down here, so I'll 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 just go real quick. Um, mm -hmm. We looked at we looked at it, and we did before, during, and after. You know, as far as going through the process instead of moving things. You know, I mean, as far as after, you know what I mean? Basically, that's self-explanatory. So you can just okay. actually go down for that, Dan, because I time's ticking here. And um, we actually we also put in the piece about the conversation with the um, during the listing presentation about price reduction, giving them a time frame, saying if we have X amount, you're going to reduce X amount in you know each time. So I mean, we definitely had that, and we also had during is to adjust the um, price during the listing agreement because you don't really know the condition of the property when you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of hope for the best, but if you find the worst. You might have to adjust the um, pieces or as um, people were saying is they have the, um, um, was it MRL? MRL? I know I'm saying your name wrong, but she had a really great piece that she shared about um, Keller offers that, you know, you have the price with um, repairs and things like that. So she gave a really good description on using that part. I can speak to that, Charlene. Thank you. I'm sorry. I said your name wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, I was speaking to providing um, bad, good, better, and best scenario on the pricing strategy when I provide the net sheet. And it's already on a, on a spreadsheet that is formulated. And I also asked for their payoff during the pre-qualification mm -hmm. So that, um, and the way that I get the good, better, and best uh, starting point um, is through Keller Offers because they're going to provide you with a cash offer deal that generally is an as-is offer from the start. And they're usually around the market value for the middle number and at the high end, if it's like pristine. So I use that as a gauge and I vet it with a formal CMA to make sure the numbers are correct. And I found them to be fairly, fairly close to my analysis. That's a great idea. That's a great yeah, idea. It's a great idea. All right. So let me keep on plugging along just because uh, in the interest of time, I just wanted to quickly get through the last uh, few people. So we, I think we were in room number seven, room number eight. I'll go. I wasn't sure if Allison was going to jump on. Um, we, didn't really, all we did was rearrange things because this, it already, everything was on here was pretty much what we already do. Mm -hmm. um, what we added was for the assistant to send out a copy of the MLS print, print out, you know, with the pre-formatted um, email, congratulations, your listing is live, you know, please, you know, review if there's anything that you would like us to change, you know, please let us know kind of an email and that's, and, and we just rearranged the order based on um, you know, how we flow. Perfect. Okay. All right. Great. I'll go ahead and take a look at that. Um, no, room number nine. I could do that. Um, so we added three items, Dan. Um, the first was somebody already mentioned this set up yourself as a sell, set up yourself and the seller with a competitive, uh, market search frequency of like 15 minutes. So if something comes on, you want to call them right away. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the pricing triangle, you know, the percentage over no traffic that um, include that. And then lastly, read page 135, tactic seven of the shift book, which is the uh, pricing ahead of the market strategy. Other than that, we're cool with it all. Sounds good. That's good, good suggestions. Um, just one quick question. Um, Mark um, had suggested that we, you wouldn't necessarily want to put your seller 
on a comp search because you don't want the seller finding out about something before you do. Um, you want to be the ones bringing the information and they might have their own search. You might do just like a weekly or periodic search uh, or periodic update for them. Uh, did you, did you as a group talk about whether you felt like it was important for the seller to be on the same search as you? We did. Uh, yeah, that's sort of how we came up with it so that they know what their competition is. And we it, we want it to come from us, not from them going on to, you know, another another source. Oh, we also mentioned that we were going to yeah, okay. leave it up to the uh, seller. We were going to give them the option. Do you want to know immediately or uh, once a week? Yeah, I mean, we set ourselves up for 15 minutes on properties that the towns we serve, but yeah, otherwise they'll be bombarded. So we'll give that. Yeah. Okay. Can, yeah, yeah okay. Sure. Right, Eric, hey, Eric, can I get through the other ones first and then we'll come back? Oh. We'll come back in just the uh, interest of time, okay? Uh, room 10. Oh, I thought we, we room only 10? had nine rooms. I thought we only had nine rooms. No, not, we may have only had nine rooms. Okay, good. All right. So, all right, perfect. So we made it. All right. So, um, so guys, this is where we are. Um, so just like last week, what I'll do is I'll take everything that everyone did, piece it together, um, synthesize it all, put it in with the uh, master copy over here, and then um, and clean up the next section for the next week. The next week is going to be a longer session, um, and I'm going to try and clean it up so that there's not quite as many steps. I don't know if anyone had a chance to start looking at this one again but this one's gonna be a little bit more involved. I'm gonna try and make it, clean it up. And I think what we're gonna do is just try and get this out a little earlier so that maybe even before we do our, our um, workshop session next week, you'll have a chance to kind of give this a little bit more thought. Melissa, do you have any other suggestions around this before we take those last two questions? Um, I think the only thing that maybe we should consider doing, Dan, is to break this down to, to before, at, and after, because I think this, it's going to shrink mm -hmm. this list down, you know, so we can deal with like, what do we need to do before? What, do, what has to happen at the listing appointment and what has to happen after? Because this is, a, it's kind of a compilation of a lot of that. It would be my suggestion. I, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, if anyone else has any suggestions, go ahead and put them in the chat because th this is a big section. I don't want to lose people over this one. And I just wanted to make, you know, better we chunk it down than to just make this like uh, trying to eat the whole elephant at once. Um, all right, guys, so let's go ahead and wrap up with these last two comments, and uh, and I want to thank you. Uh, Erica, you want to go ahead and unmute? Yeah, so I just wanted, first of all, say thank you, and second of all, just to remind people if they did make edits, you might have said it at the beginning, like whether you make it a different color or put it in italics or whatever you added so that if people want to go and take a peek at other people's tabs and they can be like, oh, that was what somebody said, and that's different from what it, how it originally started. So however you want to notate it, it might be, you know, put it in purple, put it in italic. So just it's not the original if you can remember what you added so that we can all just go in and look and make our own. I just wanted to add that. Mark, awesome. I just wanted to follow up on, on something that Paul was saying and what Dan talked about was be careful about sending too many emails or too many notifications about changes in the market. If you're doing a high volume of units, not dollar volume, but unit is you'll blow up your phone with people calling you and wanting to have a 10 minute or 20 minute or half hour conversation about the notification they just got. So you have to be judicious about how often you send them, depending on how many transactions you're doing at a time. Mm -hmm. I agree because all the, the thought process behind the systems, right, are systems that you can actually do. Mm -hmm. So don't don't create more work for yourself if you don't have to. Okay. No. Mark, thank thanks for that insight. Um, I, I thought that was a great suggestion, and and I appreciate you know the, the thinking behind that. That uh, that makes a lot of sense. And again, everything that we come up with is this isn't supposed to necessarily be the, like your ideal perfect system. It's going to be the system that works that you can implement, the one that it, you know is ideal for you, not the one that's ideal for a team of ten people. And you're trying to figure out how to do ten people's worth of work. It's got to be something that, that works for you. So, um, guys, I hope this is, continues to be a value to you. I really appreciate you guys, uh, Melissa. Thank you so much. I appreciate you facilitating this with me, Prim. Thank you so much for setting up all the rooms. I appreciate you doing that for all of us. Um, and like yeah. last time, um, is, 
Yes, go ahead, Melissa. I was just going to say that that it, as you go through your week, anything that you are doing or anything that you develop or anything that you want to share, please go to the Facebook page and just and put it in there so that we can all see it. However, you're sending gifts, it, if you have email templates, if you have checklists that you use, right? Let's start sharing on that Facebook page, and then we can answer a lot of the questions that come up here that maybe we can start help building those systems. That's a great suggestion. And then again, the other thing is that by putting it on the Facebook page, then it's it's something that uh, either me or someone else can link into that spreadsheet so that you then have access to it directly through the spreadsheet. You don't have to go into the Facebook page. It's a, you know, again, a click of a button here and all of a sudden there it is, You know, whether it's a, a spreadsheet or a website that you need to go to or whatever, so. Right, and we'll get the recording out sooner this week on Facebook, in case you want to get <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, guys, if you have any suggestions, so yeah, put them in. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.